Sometimes it's a very sensitive area when we are talking about a specific point in Christendom or the Christian faith or in any Christian denomination. I can assure you what we are saying here is nothing to do with a person or a, a group. It is to do with what history has actually revealed to all of us who are living in the 21st century. And more so, what the Lord Jesus had taught from the very beginning of his ministerial life on earth. If you don't know, the Lord Jesus lived on earth for 33 years and four months. 33 years and four months. But he only revealed his divinity to the entire world at the age of 30 at the River Jordan. He's always God, perfect God, perfect man from the day of conception the day the Archangel Gabriel spoke to our Holy Mother, the Virgin of all virgins, um, Mary, the moment he greeted her, the Son of God, the second person, dwelt in the womb of the mother, and he took on the human nature and became a man like all of us here. And he lived for 33 years and four months. From the day of conception in the mother's womb till the crucifixion, burial, death, burial, resurrection, and forever, Christ will always be the perfect God and the perfect man for eternities. Now, the Lord spoke and taught his church, his disciples, his faithfuls, his followers. And he said, what's going to happen to his beloved church? The Lord has only one church. There are no churches. It is only one because the church is the body of Christ and Christ has only one body. So it is one beloved church of Christ. But the Lord said, what will happen to my beloved church as time goes by? And he revealed what's going to happen in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and 3 which are the seven stages of the one and only beloved bride to the groom, the heavenly groom, Christ the Messiah. We today are at stage number four, Theatira. We began with Ephesus. All the names we said are of Greek origin. They are of Greek origin. Ephesus means the beloved one followed by, and that was the first century, the apostolic era, the first century, that was Ephesus, followed by Smyrna, the bitter one, the second and the third century, the martyrdom stage, where Christians were killed for the sake of Christ, martyrdom. Then came Pergamos. Pergamos literally means a matrimonial bond, where the church was united with the government. Constantine, the emperor, declared his empire is converting and embracing Christ. The Roman Empire, for the first time in its history, became a Christian nation. When the nation became Christian, guess what? No longer the church is persecuted. No longer the church needs to be living in hiding and in fear. The government is Christian. The church is Christian. They became Pergamos, matrimonial bond. They got united. And when they united together, destruction came out. Because the worst thing could happen to the church when politics enters the church. That's the worst thing could happen to it. Politics is against faith. These two are two parallel lines. They never meet. They never meet. So when the government got united, politicians started influencing how the church should live, behave, and act. And that was the era of heresies. False teachings came out of Pergamos. Some said Jesus is only man. Some said Jesus is only spirit, doesn't have a body. A lot of heresies came during the Pergamos stage. Today, we are talking about the fourth stage, Theatira. Now, the word Theatira is where the English word is taken from, theater. Now, a theater is a stage. And on the stage, what do they do? They act. So everyone who is on the stage is taking a role that is not his. 
It's not theirs, they're acting. In other words, they are faking it. They are not living the truth, they are acting. Now, Theatira is the stage of the great schism. And again, it's a sensitive area. This is nothing against no one. This is history, right? This is history. Theatira is the great schism where the church was divided into two parts, west and east, 1054 AD, where the Bishop of Rome, who is the Pope of Rome, decided to say that I am the seed of Peter. And Peter is the head of all the disciples, meaning all the patriarchs of the world, of the Christian world, need to be submissive to the seed of Peter. That's where the great division happened. The West became Catholics and the East became Orthodox. The Lord Jesus is saying, when you place yourself on a stage, when you have allowed my church, he's talking about his church, you my church, when you've allowed the world to enter you, the government to enter you, What's going to happen? You began to imitate the world. What is in the world? Positions. Superpower nations. Why are they going into different countries of the world and destroying them totally? Why? Because they want to maintain their supremacy. They want to maintain their power, their authority, their sovereignty. So that's why they'll break this, they'll kill that, and they'll smash that person in order to maintain their sovereign authority. But the Lord said, my church is not of the world. You are the light of the world. The world is darkness. And you, I put you here to be the light to this dark world. You are not to imitate the world. You are to change the world and make it Christ-like. But what happened? The church leaders started seeking thrones. When you sit on that chair, my goodness, I can assure you, the heart starts dancing. What a what a dove dove. You know, a church leader that sees people coming, listening to him, a church leader that sees people coming and bowing before him. A church leader that sees people coming and saying, you are our holy father, you are our saint, you are the one and only. There, th what's gonna happen to this head is gonna be a big balloon. A lot of self pride is gonna come here. And I've, I begin to forget that I was once upon a time in the pig's field, the prodigal son, that who I was. It was for this stunning, breathtaking man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that went out of love, mercy, and compassion with his precious blood, purchased me, and brought me out of the pig's field into my father's house. I forgot. The throne makes you forget who made you. So we started seeking thrones. I am the supreme. I am the highest. I am the number one. The church started acting, seeking positions, seeking prestige, fame, power, sovereignty. Christ said, if you are a pope, if you are a patriarch, if you are a bishop, your job on earth is a street beggar. That's what your job is to go and knock out every heart and beg for love. Seek the afflicted. Do not have royal dinners. 